All right, everybody, welcome. Curiosity Public Friday Fresh Cracks. What's going on, everybody? Drop some comments. Let me know what you are up to, what you're sipping on, if you're sipping on something. Um, got some uh, some cool stuff today. I've had a number of bottles piling up that I needed to get opened. And uh, despite the fact that nobody else could make it to the live stream here, except for you guys, of course, I figured, you know what, let me just go live and crack into a couple of these things. So I'm going to talk about what we got going um, in a second. Uh, first, I'm going to take a sip of this because I'm trying to get my palate set a little bit here because I'm going to start with some tequila. And I'm going to be going back to this one. This is the 2023 Mesa, Colorado, Colorado um, batch of Ocho, Ocho Blanco. So uh, if you see this one out there, it is a really, really tasty one. Uh, very, very, very great mouthfeel. Just fantastic. So, I mean, up there with the whatever 2021 batch that we did in our Blanco blind, this one is right up there with it. I actually tried them side by side at one point and they're neck and neck. This one's, this one was a fresh crack at the time. So I'm wondering if it's opened up a little more. Mm. Everything you want in a Blanco right there. Fantastic. There's a little bit of herbal notes in there. Great mouthfeel. Lots of good sweetness as well. All right. Who's in the chat here? <clears throat> All right, Austin says, what's up? What's up, Austin? Corey's excited to see the still Austin. Yep, we're gonna we're gonna get to that. Leo's in the house. What's up, Leo? Matthew, what's going on, man? Ernie, good to see you as well. Sipping Bardstown Collaborative Foursquare. Yeah, I think I did that one on my last live stream. It was a pretty good one, actually. I enjoyed it. <clears throat> Fluffles is sitting with uh, their cat, Mr. Fluffles. Uh, Emmanuel Martinez is going to crack open a store pick written house. Awesome. Tori Hanzo is in the house. What's up, man? Cheers to Inflame. Saw them with Opeth and Catatonia a few years back. Yes, I've seen, I think I've seen them maybe like two or three times over the years. I think the first time I saw them was actually, it was a soil work Inflames show. Uh, in San Francisco, and it was pretty awesome. And then I saw them do their solo show, just them at the Roxy in LA, which was just still probably one of the best concerts I've ever been to. All right. David is sipping on a store pick of Knob Creek 115 Rye. Awesome choice there. Roy, what is up? Drinking the new 2023 Jack Daniels single barrel barrel proof rye. It's a hot mess, but has some spicy maple syrup flavor. Interesting. Yeah, I haven't tried that one. I remember trying the the prior barrel strength rye that they put out, and uh, remember it being very good. So excited to try that one. <clears throat> yeah, the other Ocho one that's out right now, um, SJCS is talking about. I haven't tried that one. I think that is that is that the 2022 one or is that the other? I think there's two different batches of the 23 out already. I can't remember. <clears throat> but this is the only 23 one I've tried, so I've not tried that one yet. Jeff Perkins in the house says, cheers from Northern California, sipping on some Lucky 7 work or Workhouse and having some ramen. That sounds like an interesting combo. Jay Fretless in the house. What is up? Good to see you here. Corey, what is up? Did I ever say hi to you? I think I did because I you had a comment earlier. <clears throat> Mac Daddy, trying something new. Got a Widow Jane 10 year. Interesting. Not, never found those to be particularly interesting personally, but um, let us know what you think of it. Because I haven't had a recent bottle of it. So maybe it's gotten better. Uh, Justin says, going the wine route tonight. Granville 2019 Holstein Estate Pinot Noir. Awesome. Leo, looking forward to the Kilcarran 8. Snagged a bottle of the snagged a bottle of the bourbon and sherry. Okay, so it was workhorse. Okay, workhouse sounded a little weird to me too. It made me think of roadhouse for some reason, I don't know. Uh, Ken H, cheers back at ya. Leo sipping on the Irishman 17. Good, interesting stuff going on here tonight. All right, I'm gonna give this uh, one more sip here and some final thoughts on it if I have any.
And it's just, to me, it's everything I want in a Blanco. It's just got everything. It's got a great mouthfeel, very, very crisp agave flavor, slightest touch of like a white pepper going on with it. Um, just, I mean, great mouthfeel, good amount of sweetness. It's just so well balanced and yeah, love this stuff. So yeah, if you are looking for you know, really good Blanco, can't sing enough praises about Ocho and especially that particular batch because there is some batch variants. Um, but I, I mean, I, I say that, but pretty much every single one I've tried, I've really liked across the board. Repo, Enio, um, Extra Enio, doesn't really seem to matter that much. They're all pretty awesome. So let me go over quickly what, what I'm going to be cracking into tonight in the order that we're going to go to, I think. So we're going to start with a tequila. That's right. El Tesoro Paradiso. This is going to be fresh crack of this. Um, I actually opened this up to our Discord yesterday. I took a picture of my shelf and said, all right, what should I open? <laughs> and uh, this was the first one that somebody requested was the Paradiso. The next one that I'll get into, I think Roy, I think you asked for this one, the Kilcarren. Um, Eight-year cask strength sherry cask matured bottle. So this one, yeah, I have not cracked into this one yet. It is a 57.5% alcohol, eight-year-old. Uh, sherry cask matured Campbelltown. Very, uh, I mean, I've liked all the Kilcarran I've had, have not had this um, cast strength before. And then at the end, um, maybe not the end, maybe I'll do one more after this. Still Austin cast strength bourbon. This is a 59% Texas cast strength bourbon, Texas bourbon. And a brand that I've heard lots of people rave about and that I've never tried, so at least that I remember. I might have tried a sample somewhere and just forgotten about it, but I don't recall. So this will be a fun one to get into, aged at least two years. And as you may or may not know, the Texas heat really can uh, make things mature pretty quickly. So the age statement, a little less important with some of those, but you know that heat does some weird things to the flavors as well. So we'll see how that one is. But uh, yeah, I killed my Ocho, so I better get into the first uh, first bottle here, huh? And I'll check back in with the chat. So, Siyama, I think I saw you pop in here. This was your request. I think it was your request, the El Tesoro Paradiso. So I have an older bottling of it, um, and I have not owned one of these newer bottlings. So this is the first time I'm going to try one of them. It is a five-year-old Extra Añejo, 40% alcohol. Look at that sitting in there it's wrapped in uh some uh paper so let's uh, let's see this is, a, this is a, you get two for one here you get a taste test and an unboxing right don't people like unboxing still is that, is that still a thing i don't know look at that attention to detail here you know it's even got a little sticker on it closing it up branded sticker you gotta like that so let's see I'm probably gonna just shred it. Should I just shred it or should I be careful? I'll go somewhere in between. Nah, whatever. <laughs> I lost my patience. All right, get that out of here. And here's the bottle, wow. Pretty cool looking bottle. It's got a little medallion hanging from it here. Let's see if I can get some focus. There you go, five year old extra in you. We got batch number. And there's the adornment right there. So if you're keeping score, this is a, it's a French oak cask. Um, bottle number 2139, batch P-04, and um, NOM 1139. And uh, this is kind of the pinnacle of El Tesoro. They have some, you know, other special release stuff from time to time, but of like the regular lineup. This is, uh, I believe, as aged as it gets. They have a regular Extra Añejo. I think I cracked into that maybe a couple months ago on a live stream. Didn't blow me away, actually. Um, but let's see how this one is. I, You know, the, the old bottling, I should have put a picture up somewhere, loaded one up so I could show you guys what it looks like, or I should have just grabbed my, my bottle of it. Had a very different look to it. Kind of had a colorful label and just said, like, Paradiso written kind of in cursive across it. 
looks very different. I actually think this looks a little better. It's a little less cheerful, but you know, it just looks a little bit, a little bit cooler. And I really like the, the, the stoppers that they use these kind of ceramic stone feeling, uh, toppers. So let's give this it's fresh crack. Wow. So synthetic cork, not bad. Good color to this. Let's get it poured up. All right. I'm going to let this sit for a second and then uh, check the nose and get into the palette of it. And check in with the, the, uh, the chat here, guys. All right. Let's see. Where are we? Here we go. Uh, Kawabunga says, late to the game is the Kilcarran 8 this year's release. I believe so. I got it. This was one of the ones that was in, uh, I don't know, one of those, some website had a, like a lottery thing for it to buy it at MSRP from, uh, I think in the UK, but I'm pretty sure this is this year's release. Does it say anywhere obvious? I mean, I got it fairly recently and it was, from what I understand, the most recent release, do they have like an age stamp on these? Yeah, I can't really read it. Let me see if I can see it over here. I can't, I can't read this. My eyes are already starting to go and there's not enough light on this set to kind of read the laser stamp. But uh, yeah, pretty sure it's this year's. Let's see, I don't have the advantage of finding out in post-production and putting it up there for you, so. <laughs> Matthew has got a Four Roses OBSV barrel strength. Very nice. Yeah, it's kind of exciting that they're putting out all 10 recipes in individual little bottles as blends. I'm guessing they're blends, and I think they're putting them out at like 107 proof. Sounds really cool. So that, that, that could be a really cool thing to, to go through them again. Even though we did it once already with barrel picks, it'd be kind of cool to have the official Four Roses uh, sampling kit. Uh have I tried uh, Shamuko's Diablo? I have not. That uh, that whole line is on my list of ones to to, to try. So definitely, I've heard good things. <clears throat> Roy is trying to send a super chat, but it will not go through. That is all right. Don't worry about it, man. Appreciate it either way. Siyama in the house. I'm getting notifications that um, my YouTube channel is live. Good thing that came right now. <laughs> 15 minutes uh, after the stream started. Um, who else is in here? <clears throat> Ken H from New York City, sipping tequila ocho here. Tried both Blanco and Repo, both are really good. I agree there. Um, <clears throat> I, I've had, I don't think I had the cask strength prior releases. I think this might be the first one, but I'm, I, now I can't remember. I think I had the Kilcarran they have a 12 year, right? I think I had the 12 year from last year, but I don't think that was, I think the cast strength was always an eight year, right? Or it's not the 12 year release. So, yep, have not had that one. I've heard good things. Uh, you said, so you said that was 57.1. This is 57.5. So yeah, must be a different batch. This must be newer. Um, okay. <laughs> Come on, Dutch. You always spill anyway, shred the wrapper. Tori Hanzo had a Kilcarran 16 over the weekend. It was delicious. I actually saw a Long Road 21 today. Um, was at a local shop looking kind of through their back back room inventory of stuff sitting around and that, that caught my eye, but I did not pull the trigger. Um, okay. Uh, so Fluffles has a Texas story here. I was visiting family in Texas and we left a few 12 packs in the Texas heat in the back of a truck. And the next day, a bunch of the cans had exploded from the Texas heat. Wow. Yeah. I mean, it does interesting things to barrels of whiskey as well. Um, so we'll see how that, uh, the still Austin is. Uh, good question here from SJCS. I was literally thinking about this today because we're going to be getting together to film, probably film that episode this weekend. Um, or not this weekend, next weekend. Yeah, because Fortaleza does not have an extra Añejo. I do have a little bit left of our lot 42 and 43 samples that we got from our friend, uh, Dr. Arju. But those are not true extra Añejos. I'm thinking we may just do it 
we're either going to do it as a four-way blind instead with just the existing brands, um, all of their extra añejos, because in the long run, we want to do a second series anyway of different brands doing these kinds of blinds. And, you know, doing a five-way blind is already hard enough with the extra añejos. You're going to have longer finishes with a lot of them. I don't know. I think four, a four-way blind would be just as interesting. So, but open to suggestions. I mean, um, I was thinking of Excelencia throwing that in there potentially. Um, you know, something that's a little bit more like Fortaleza. I was thinking about the Cascana's extra Extraño that we have. That could be an interesting one. But um, for right now, my thought is to go into it with just the four remaining brands and see how that goes. But hey, pop some suggestions into chat, guys. Always open to that. Uh, okay, David is interested in seeing how I like the Still Austin. Yeah, I've never had it that I can recall. Yeah, I've tried a bunch of the various brands of Texas whiskeys, and um, I like a lot of them. I don't love any of them so yet, at least. So this one is one that keeps getting recommended to us, so I'm excited to, to give it a shot. Cheers back at you, David. Thanks for stopping in here. Um... Roy says Buna 12 is a solid scotch. Yeah. Um, Corey got to visit Springbank. Glenn, Glenn, Glenn Guile, is that how you say that? That would be a really cool one to see. Uh, HR Bartender says the new Yale single barrel repos are such disappointments. Do you think the Yale brand uses diffusers? I actually, I don't know. I don't know. I was I confuse I always confuse that with the Lalo La, Lala or Lolo Lalo. Is that the other one? For some reason in my mind, I I forget which one's which. And I was drinking one of them recently, the Blanco. It must have been the Lalo that I was drinking. And I thought it was pretty good. And I don't know if they use diffusers or not. Um, um okay, so Siyama's got a blind going, doesn't even know what he's drinking. That's always fun. Um, okay, let me, I'm somewhat caught up, but I want to try this now. So let's see how the Paradiso, wow, this thing is just coating the glass very, very nicely. I don't know if you can see that. Let me see if I can get a close up of this. Focus. It's almost like it completely coats it and then just goes down so evenly. Well, let's see how it smells. Wow. Not a lot of agave on the nose. It smells almost syrupy, if that makes sense. I get almost that waxy thing. I think I was talking about it in the Arete drink through that I, that I sometimes get on their age stuff. I feel like I'm kind of getting a little bit of that here. Nose is not blowing me away. I just there you go. There's your spillage. I just sloshed it on myself. I'm not sure if you can see that. <laughs> Nose not blowing me away, but let's uh, let's try the palate here. Cheers, guys. Happy Friday. Wow. Not what I was expecting. Not what I remember from my old old bottling of it. I'm initially hit with black pepper. <clears throat> a fair amount of black pepper. Not overpowering, like it's actually very well balanced, but that's the predominant flavor that hits me at the beginning. Um, let, me, let me take a second sip, see if, uh, see if my palate's acclimated to this and I get something different, let's see. Okay, a little bit less this time, but it's still a significant amount of black pepper right on the front of the palate. It stays there the entire time. Not a ton of agave. There's there's kind of that, you know, aged agave root in there, like the, the core. And that's very nice. The sweetness is subtle. It's, it's hard to pick out like a specific sweet profile, like, like a caramel or anything like that. It's, it's on the kind of mid to dark side. So it's not like a white sugar. It's, it's got a little bit of dark, dark sugar flavoring in there. Hmm. All right. Interesting. Interesting. Let me let that sit for a second. Check back in with the chat and give it another couple sips in a second. Um, okay. I saw a super chat. 
that must have been you, Roy. Yeah, there it is. Awesome, man. Thanks so much. To a great weekend, everyone. Thank you, Roy, for your continued support of the channel. It means a lot to us. And um, and thanks for participating in the Discord. Um, again, if you're on Patreon, you can get on the Discord. We are. S I'm hoping this week I'm gonna try to meet up with somebody that's a Discord expert <laughs> and get some stuff set up so I can um, open it up more easily to the YouTube side. Um, and um, and then if you're on the YouTube membership, you'll be able to access as well at that point. Um, so hopefully that goes. I can do that this week. But um, yeah, thanks, Roy. Appreciate that. Um, plans on a mezcal drink through? I don't know. We have a couple. We might start with a couple reviews. Um, you know, the drink throughs for us, they just they take a long time to prepare. They take a long time to film, and they take a long time to edit. So. I think we've become a little bit more selective with what we're going to do with them. And it's, you know, in part based on what we want to do, <laughs> which is a lot of it. And then also what we think will kind of help grow the channel, get hits and things like that. So yeah, Mezcal, I don't really know how it would do. Um, so I think we're probably going to try some reviews first and see, see how they do. And um, it's definitely something we want to do for sure. I mean, I'd say in the long run, definitely in the more, uh, you know, upcoming future, I can't can't say for sure what we're going to do. Um, but yeah, so Osito is drinking the Ocho Single Barrel and Yeho 101 Proof from La Mula Vintage. I don't know. I got two of those Single Barrel and Yeho's, and one of them's here on set somewhere, and I haven't been able to find it. So I don't know. I don't remember where they're from. Um, but that's they're such cool releases to get, you know, like a cask strength level and Yeho tequila is just awesome. So um, that's definitely going to be in our, uh, our Ocho drink through. <laughs> Under Construction asks the impossible question here. Can you pinpoint the best tequila you've ever had? I mean, in a lot of ways, it depends what kind of mood I'm in. If I'm in the mood for a Blanco, um, you know, quite frankly, for a Blanco, I would say the one that I've liked the most has been the G4 Madeira Blanco. I mean, I absolutely love that. Is that here? No, that's Ocho. Um, this is another great one, Ocho. Any of the Ocho Blancos that I've had have been fantastic. The 2023 Mesa Colorado is one of the best I've ever had. Um, but yeah, the G4 Madeira is probably my top of the line Blanco right now. I mean, it's just, it's just fantastic. It's, it's, it's definitely the one I would say is at the top of my list. Not very available, but they do. They are going to release it again this year, they've said. So I'm excited about that. I hope it becomes a regular release. There's usually a good amount of it that hits the market, so it's not impossible to get, but it's not a continuous release. So I would say, I mean, based, you know, we did a blind battle like this. So for the Blanco, I'd have to come back and say Ocho. I'm usually kind of the way that Dylan puts it, and I tend to agree with that, is I tend to gravitate towards the Blancos or the extra Añejos. It just kind of depends on if I want barrel influence or I don't want the barrel influence. And sometimes I feel like a Blanco, and sometimes I feel like, uh, like an Añejo or an extra Añejo. Um, you know, Tears of Llorona, if I'm going for an extra Añejo, that's, that's a bottle that is all about the barrel influence. It's not really all about the agave, the, the agave is there and it's done masterfully. It's integrated masterfully with all the other flavors that are there, but it's a lot more about what the barrel brings to the table as opposed to what the agave is bringing to the table. So I think that's a great one. Cheaper option is um, the Arte Noma 1146, which has a ton of barrel influence as well, but it's a regular Añejo, but it's, it's fantastic. I've been giving that to people as gifts, um, people who like tequila and it's, it's been a hit with everybody I've given it to, and it's one I really enjoy sipping on as well. So so I can't pinpoint just one, but there, I gave you some options. To this. <laughs> um, it's a hard thing. I, 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 uh, I understand a lot of people want to know that. Like, what's the best thing? What's the best thing? But it's so hard to, to really say. If you want to just look at our scoreboard, the highest tequilas, I think, are the two that I actually mentioned. So um, the G4 Blanco Madeira right here and the Tears of Verona. So there's an extra Añejo and a Blanco, um, two of the best we've had. So there you go. All right, what else we got going here? Um, all right, catching up. 
Tom says, tears of Yorona and Excelencia for sure. So that's for our extra Añejo, I'm guessing. Leo says, Lalo is legit. Yeah, I, I enjoyed it. I don't know that I, I, I it, it'd be one that I'd want to put into our next Blanco blind probably. I liked it enough to do that. Um, I had a couple classes of it at a restaurant with a meal and it, it stood up to it and had some great flavors. So yeah, I think it's a good one. Um, <clears throat> All right. Okay, so Roy says, FYI, Super Chat went through uh, with my laptop, but not my Android. Interesting. That is interesting. Don't know what that's up with. What's up with that? Oh, I'm talking like Yoda again. What's going on with me? So Justin has an interesting question here. What are the rules for tequila additives? Again, do you think that's why it's coating the glass like that? Well, Altasoro is a brand that is pretty well known for not using additives. You know, you'll get this kind of consistency with aged products. You know, you'll get a little bit more viscosity. Uh, but if you see this in a Blanco, it it might be glycerin. Uh, if you've tasted a lot of tequilas, you can sometimes tell when it's glycerin and when it's not. Um, there, there are ways to get a lot of viscosity without using glycerin. So Fortaleza Lot 100, and I think they're going to be doing the same thing with Lot 150. They actually distill it to bottling proof. So usually, you know, they'll distill the stuff down to a higher proof and then water it down to exactly 80 proof or whatever proof they're going to bottle it at. With, the, with that Lot 100, they distilled it to 80 proof and put it into the bottle. So they didn't add any, uh, any water. Um, and it had a much more syrupy consistency. So it's not, it doesn't always mean that there's glycerin. Uh, if, you're, if you've tried a lot of things, you can sometimes detect the way the glycerin, it just coats your mouth in almost an unnatural way. As far as coating the, the glass, it might look like this, it might not, but just by the way this tastes on the palate, I don't think there are any additives in this. No. Well, it's opening up a lot. The pepper's subsiding a little bit. There's a little bit more of that that core sweetness coming through. It's like a it's like a cooked agave that's almost gotten caramelized a little bit. It's really nice. It's not punch you in the face with the sweetness. It's punch you in the face a little bit with the with the pepperiness. But um, it's pretty. You know, it highlights the peppery without having it be overpowering. So it's I'm enjoying it. But to answer the real question here, what are the rules for additives? You know, if you look at the actual written rules, it's essentially up to 1% um, of, of, of the tequila can be an additive from these four different categories. And I think it's a little bit ambiguous. Some people say that means that they can use up to 1% of each of the four categories, meaning that up to 4% can be additives. With Blancos, there is language that say this, says they can't use additives. And then elsewhere in the rules, it does say that they are allowed. So there's ambiguities within the regulations. It's it's kind of a mess. Uh, so, you know, don't really trust everything that they put on the label. If it says 100% agave, they can still do that and use up to, you know, 1% additives. L look at te Tequila Matchmaker, check out their additive free program. You know, they, they're going through and trying to vet every brand that will let them in to you know, make sure they don't have additives. And if you look at that list, you can be pretty sure that they're not using additives. I, I believe Altasoro is on there. Um, if they're not, then their reputation has been that they do not use additives. And I certainly don't taste any additives. But yeah, it is, it is an interesting coating. <laughs> it is interesting. All right, I'm trying to catch up here a little bit. Um, Tori Hanzo is revisiting ECBP C922, maybe the least favorite ECPB ever. Tastes like cherry cough drops and nail polish destroying my face. Jeez. I don't remember it being that bad. Um, Dark Meat Chicken, what's up, man? Says, call me crazy, but right now, Benchmark Foolproof has now become my daily. Now. Jeff says, the drink through are probably. Drink throughs are probably my favorite episodes. Yeah, they're, I mean, believe me, we love doing them. Uh, it's just, it, it, I wish we could do more of them, but it's like if we're getting together and film, it's like we can do one really, one drink through or film like three other episodes. <laughs> so we always kind of have to weigh how many of them we're going to do. Uh, but we are prepping for one. Um, 
that uh, I think will happen. That's all I'll say. I think we might film two next week. But we'll see. Eric Matson in the house says, late to the party, sipping on the latest Ocho Blanco after your recommendation, really enjoying it. Yeah, that's what I opened up with, actually. That was my palate setter, the, uh, the 2023 Colorado. Fantastic, this one. Really, really good. I was tempted to pick up another bottle the other day because I saw it again, but just have too many damn bottles, man. Uh, okay. So Roy actually likes the blind episodes the best. Interesting. Um, okay, so Azito says, uh, Carrera Blanco lot 4546 with the extended fermentation is the only Blanco above G4 Madeira for me. Interesting. Very interesting. Yeah, the G4, man. That's I love that stuff. Eric says, what happened to all the Curiosity private members? Um, I don't know. What do you mean? Did they disappear? Did our did something happen to them? Um, new member, Corey, what's up? Thanks for joining, man. Appreciate that. Great way to support the channel is to join Curiosity Private. You can hit the join button on YouTube, or you can look for the link to Patreon and head over there and join on Patreon. Right now, the only benefit to Patreon is that you get access to Discord right now. Um, so you can do either one, whatever you want. It's a great way to help us out. Um, okay. All right, I gotta catch up, guys. I'm way behind here, sorry. All right, here's a good question. Tony says, hi Dutch, love your channel. What's a great intro whiskey to get started? Oh man, another tough question. So, I mean, my answer is gonna be different. If you've never really sipped whiskey, I'd give you one thing. If you've tried some whiskeys and you haven't really gotten into it, I might give you something different. Um, let's ask the community. I mean, what would you guys recommend? I wouldn't break the bank on anything. Personally, I like to give people Woodford Reserve, not because I think it's what they're going to like, but I think it's it kind of will show you all the different corners that that whiskey can reach or that, that bourbon at least. So if we're going to start with the bourbon, I would say try a Woodford. And if you think, OK, I kind of like the subtle sweetness here or I kind of like the spices here or I kind of like the wood here. And you can kind of figure out based on that which direction to go next. Scotch is harder because the flavors are, there's a wider spectrum of flavors you're going to get. I still kind of like to recommend Highland Park because Highland Park has not too much peat, but enough peat that you know, okay, that part I like, so I want to go for more peaty stuff. Or you might say, I don't like that at all. So then you're going to go for stuff with no peat or very little peat. Or you might say, I like a little bit of it, like I, I, I like how much is in Highland Park. So um you know, you also have the sherry cask influence with Highland Park. So if you like that sherry cask influence, the sweetness in there, there's a lot of stuff you can you can move to from there. So I kind of like picking those two as my starting points. I like Highland Park as a starting point for scotch. I mean, I say Woodford, but I still don't think it's the perfect thing. It's it's hard to really pick a well-rounded bourbon. I think it's easier to start with the sweeter bourbon. So if you find like a Buffalo Trace product. Eagle Rare or regular Buffalo Trace, those are accessible. They're easy to get into because they're sweet. Um, they're not very spicy. They're easy to easy to sip on. And after time, you know, your palate will acclimate and trying more, you know, proofy things, higher proof things will be easier. And, you know, just uh, you can have a lot of fun with it. So bad answer. I'm giving only bad answers tonight, by the way, guys. I'm trying. <laughs> the words are not coming. Uh, okay. <clears throat> Interesting question here. Under construction says temperature for whiskey and tequila. I tend to like both neat and on the rocks. I got to tie my shoe cause it's really bothering me, but I'm going to keep talking. Um, temperature it, for me, it's, uh, if it's winter time, I tend to drink things neat more often. And in the summer, I'm, you find me more likely throwing a piece of ice into something. There's also, there's sometimes I have bottles that are a little bit more on the tannic side, oaky side, like with certain whiskeys. I don't really do this so much for tequilas, but certain whiskeys where I don't really like them very much neat, I've found with a little piece of ice, not a huge piece of ice, but like a little piece of ice, gets a little bit of the chill, gets a little bit of dilution. They can be really good. I've actually found that the Old Forester barrel strength bottles that I don't really love, I really enjoy them with a small piece of ice in them. They're just, it elevates them for me. So don't listen to what Dylan says. <laughs> Okay, 
need another Vegas episode. Yeah, we may. Uh, we may have uh, another one coming up. Well, we may be filming another one. Um, we're kind of debating what we're going to do. We don't have a ton of time to film the next time we're going to be out there, but we're probably going to, we have a, we have an interesting idea for one. So we'll, we might start that and see how it goes. And uh, it may, it may be another one of those uh, three part crazy adventure ones. So we'll see. Uh, Marvin's in the house. What's up? Says the contender series is the best. So thanks. That's been a fun one to do. Um, Ozito says, uh, I used to get blasted for praising the Arete standard Reposado, and now the Fortaleza fanboy is getting butthurt from Fortaleza not doing well in your plans. Yeah. Yeah. It's, man, you know, and, and you know, our friend, uh, Dr. Oju, who actually we filmed an episode with him that's going to be coming out soon. He brought a bottle of the metal label, um, El Himidor that we drank with him. Um, <clears throat> but he, he used to, he did, he was the same way. He was always, praising Arete Repo. I mean, he also loves Fortaleza, but he was just saying, you know, look, Arete Repo is going to blow your mind. And I think we were all really surprised at just how good it was. So, you know, it's amazing. And you're right, you know, Fortaleza has just got this cult following, maybe we, we call it. Um, I hate to say that we might have urged that in some ways, but I hope not. Uh, I mean, it's fantastic tequila. I mean, there's no way around it, but is it is it the best? Well, maybe not. Okay. <clears throat> Let me see. I'm going to try to get caught up and then get into the next bottle. Um, okay. Let's see. Oh, that well, it's got a good recommendation there. Old Forester Statesman. I don't know why I didn't think of that. But yeah, another great one. Um, you know, I always thought that we were in the minority. I think we were like the only channel where all of us, even on the Bourbon Guild, all four of us back there really, really enjoyed Statesman. And it, I feel like nobody else in whiskey review world has liked it as much as we have. I don't know what it is, but I, I've always really liked it. Yeah, Eric, that's a really good one too. Uh, Weller Special Reserve. Um, if you listen to our podcast, there was an episode Dylan hosted a whiskey tasting and uh, he was telling, he kind of told us about how it went. And that was one of the ones that everybody, even like the non whiskey drinkers were like, wow, this is so good. That's a good one. That's a good choice there. Um, all right. Wow. A lot of good comments here, guys. Mac daddy Woodford. Yep. Me too, man. That was one of the ones that really, uh, really showed me what kind of flavors you can get in a, in a whiskey or in a bourbon at least. <laughs> Leo says Octomore for Scotch. I mean, yeah, if you want to go full Pete. <laughs> uh, Hattori Hanzo says, I think get two different ones from two different distilleries. A Woodford is a great start, but also try a Cooper's Craft um, E.H. Taylor bottle and bond. Is that early times bottle and bond? Yeah. To see if you can detect the differences in flavor. Maker's Mark is good too. Yeah, I, I, I agree with Maker's. I mean, if you can't find Waller Special Reserve, Maker's is fantastic. Um, what did I miss? Did he love the <laughs> Paradiso <laughs> or was it not Fortaleza? <laughs> no, this is good. I, I think my old, old bottling is better. Maybe that's nostalgia and rose colored glasses, but this is really good. Don't get me wrong. It's going to be interesting because we are prepping for a drink through for, with El Tesoro. Um, I don't know if that's going to be one of the next ones or not, but we'll definitely have this bottle and we will have the, uh, the old, old bottle that I've got. And, um, it'll be, I've never had them side by side. Obviously I just cracked into this. So that will be fun to see how that goes. All right. I'm going to put a sticker on this. I poured myself a little bit more cause I want to let it sit for the rest of this evening and I'll come back to it after it's had even longer to open up. Oh, I don't need to put a label on this. It's the only one in the tequila glass. I'm not that dumb. Am I don't answer that. Okay. Let's move on. Enough muttering under my breath. I think we're going to go scotch next and then finish off with the bourbon. <clears throat> so, Roy, this one's for you, man. The Kilcairn eight-year-old cask strength, 57.5%. I'll show the bottle again here in case you missed the beginning. Look at that. I believe this is the 2022 release. Let me see. Let me hold this close to the light over here. I'm going to go off camera again for a second. See if I can actually see. Oh, I can see it now. 
Uh, it looks like 23. So one, uh, yeah, 2023. So it's yeah, January 24, 23 is the date on it. I can actually see the little code on the bottom there. Can you see it? Let's see if it'll show up here. I don't think it will. Nope. Let me get myself a Glen Cairn and get into this one. All right. Happy Friday. Love that sound. Dylan, I think Dylan's here. Popping into the chat at least. What's up, man? I did send you the link to join the stream, man. You don't have to just lurk in the chat. I guess you're not lurking, but. All right. Kilcarran, eight year cask strength, Sherry. Let's see how it coats the glass here. Ooh, very nice. Very nice. I can smell it. Oh man, I can smell it from there. Wow. Mm. Oh, that's fantastic. All right, I'm gonna let it sit for a second and, and see what uh, mischief Dylan is causing here. So he is sipping on Wild Turkey 13, man. Good choice. Yeah, we uh, we had some Wild Turkey 13. Dylan and I were uh, across the pond. No, over the sea, uh, somewhere, somewhere out of the country. <laughs> where they sell wild turkey everywhere and uh, wild turkey 13 and it was uh, quite a pleasure but we did film a i think a fresh crack kind of thing of one so i'll try to get that one uh edited and out this coming week let me scroll up i missed some comments so sorry guys yeah huey says is fortaleza the weller of tequila i i really do think so i mean it's if you're following tequila you know that Fortaleza Blanco, sorry, Fortaleza Añejo, it, it basically just disappears now. Like, you can't find it. I used to be able to go pick up a bottle. You know, it would sell out eventually, but, you know, the local stores here would get it, sit on the shelves for a week or two, and then it would be gone. I'd be able to go in, get a couple bottles, and, um, and then that became harder and harder. And I found a bunch on the shelf at a good price, bought a few, because I, I realized at that point, I'm probably never going to see it again at this price. <laughs> so yeah, it's it's really become the Weller of tequila. It's 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 one of those much like Weller. It's maybe not the best whiskey, but it's very good. Um, it's very good tequila. It's very well made. Very enjoyable to drink, and uh, maybe just gotten a little bit overhyped because there's a lot of other really good tequilas out there. Um, I don't think everybody needs to lose their mind over Fortaleza. <laughs> Tori Hanzo did not like the Añejo, but loves the Blancos. Interesting. Roy loved the Kingsman movie with Statesman, and I really like, and I rarely like movies. Interesting. Those are fun movies, I gotta say. They're, they're pretty enjoyable. Um, let's see here. Roy says, sounds like uh, Arete Repo beats this. Uh, I don't know that I would say that. Uh, it's pretty, uh, it's pretty good. I was going to just pour, pour a Rete Repo to compare it, but I don't know where the bottle went. Um, I can see the Añejo, but I can't see the Repo. Yeah, it's, it's, no, it's, mm, it's an interesting question. Because there are some Repos that have a lot of barrel influence, but not, not as much as this, not as much as the El Tesoro. Um, okay, Ernie says, need to pick up the pace on to a pour of Heaven Hill Bottled and Bond, which is a good $50 whiskey. Yeah, not bad. Not bad. <clears throat> um, SJCS says, what do you think of the Tequila Ombre? I learned that he claims to choose products, claims to choose products for ferment and still when he is a co-owner. I'm not sure of Carrera still strength anymore. What do I think of Tequila Ombre? I mean, I enjoy watching his stuff. I mean, I, I don't watch it religiously, but I, you know, I check his stuff out every once in a while. Um, he seems to be willing to call things out. Um, and he, he's, yeah, he says, you know, he owns or a part owner of Ferment and Still. And I guess he's kind of handpicking what he puts up there for the most part. 
and he claims that he's only putting things up there that he likes. So I don't, I don't have any reason to doubt him. You know, he seems to be uh, willing to call things out that he doesn't like. And uh, I don't follow him close enough to know much more than that. So, yeah, I don't have anything negative to say about him. That's for sure. I mean, I, I think it's uh, there's not a ton of people reviewing tequila, at least kind of in a produced format. And I, he, he doesn't even really produce a lot of videos. He does a lot of live stream stuff. Um, but, yeah, I, I think he's doing some good stuff. Uh, let's see here. <laughs> I'm not, not going to read that comment from Roy, but it's a good comment. Um, uh, okay, Corey says, I've cracked, I'd crack a Kilcarran with you, but all we have here are distillery visitor minis, and we're saving those. Yeah, I don't blame you for saving that. Uh, is Dylan too cool for the lives? Absolutely. Way too. Yeah, Roy's got it there. He's got a private island that requires a helicopter to escape. And as, as JCS is one of Dylan's secret accounts. Exactly. There you go. Oh, man. Uh, all right. Let me give this Kilcarran a, a sniff and a taste here. Good looking color on it. Mm. Really nice nose. Mm. Yeah, there's a, there's a touch of that peat in there. Definitely get the sherry and a bit of the underlying, you know, core barley sweetness. Not really any oak or anything. It's a nice balance. Let me give it a taste. Wow. Wow. That's like chunky flavor, man. That's <laughs> hard to explain this, but it's like swallowing like a brick of flavor. I mean, it's just, it's, we talk about depth of flavor and like a rich, uh, rich flavor profile, a deep flavor profile. And this really has it like in the front of the palate, which is pretty, pretty crazy. And it extends into the mid palate. The finish is not crazy. But man, just so much flavor hits the palate at once. It's kind of impressive. Let me give it a second sip. Yeah. Yeah, you just kind of get a little bit of everything right there, right off the bat. It's not really broken up. I mean, you can discern the different flavors, but they kind of all hit you at once. It's really interesting. The, the peat is in there, the sherry, core is there. There's a little bit of oak on the palate. And then this really nice, to complement the sherry sweetness, there's like another sweet, doesn't taste like sherry. I mean, almost tastes like, like that barley sweetness underneath it all. All comes, and it's all very well balanced, presents amazingly well. And, and you taste the proof. And for eight years old, I, I think the only place it, man, does it suffer on the finish even? I'm, I was saying it trails off. The finish is still long but you're not left with as much flavor as you have in the first two thirds of the palate, which is just tons. So I think that's maybe where you're losing out a little bit with an eight year versus something aged a bit longer, but man, you're not missing much on the palate. It's, it's really, really nice. So let me, let me let it sit for a minute. Let me, I'll check back in with it. Oh, uh, all right. <laughs> the Curiosity Public Board has decided to suspend D D Dillion and confiscate all of his GTS. Uh, Mac Daddy says, have you guys considered a series like The New Kids on the Block or Hidden Gems? I've been really down on the cost of bourbon whiskey lately, especially with the secondhand market. Yeah, I think that's kind of what we were thinking with the Contender series is to throw th some things in there that just kind of sit on the shelf. I mean, like right now, our leader two of the categories are pretty accessible whiskeys. So Maker's Mark is our, I think our winner in our um, lightweight and Elijah Craig Barrel Proof is one of, one of those batches is the winner of our heavyweight right now. You know, neither one of those is crazy. Like Elijah Craig can be a little bit tricky to find sometimes, but it's out there and it comes out three times a year. And yes, you know, some batches are going to be a little bit better than others, but 
it's 70 to 80 bucks and it's high proof and it's really good. Um, so I think our contender series is kind of like what we're going to do that with. We're going to throw some really nice bottles in there and some of us are going to pick some, some things that just sit around on the shelf and see how they do as well. So, you know, I have thought about that though. And I think it would be kind of an interesting thing to take some of the unicorns and put them up against some other more readily available bottlings in some blinds or something like that. So yeah, we definitely have thought about it. Um, not sure what the best concept would be. You know, there's, you know, would we be better off just reviewing more random bottles off the shelf that, that, uh, that might be better than people realize, or would it be better to do some blinds like that? Um, yeah, I don't know, but it, yeah, we have definitely thought of that concept and, and, be a, be a fun one to to to, 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 to dig to dig into some more. Wow, tequila's kicking in, man. Uh, Leo says Fortaleza is crazy now. The Blanco stays uh, sits a tiny bit longer than the rest, but the rest fly off the shelves. Yeah, it's just gone. It's just gone. I mean, occasionally, I was finding the Añejo at Bavmo's around here, local liquor chain, and then. Uh, about uh probably about a year ago within the past year it's just that's become impossible too so Let's see andrew says sorry if you answered this before but i have to know tapatio excellencia versus tears of yorona i mean i would pick tears personally it's just got you know if you're talking about i mean i was talking about this a little bit earlier and i'll reiterate it because it's basically if you're thinking about tequila and you're thinking about Blanco, which is basically just, this is the unaged core thing here. This is the art, the craft of distilling agave. And then you think about everything past that, repo and on, it's it's what is the barrel and what is some time sitting due to that. And when you get to extra añejos, it really becomes about what is the barrel doing to this stuff for the most part. Now there are some that use reused barrels like G4 stuff doesn't have a ton of bar barrel influence earlier batches of Excell Excellencia didn't have a ton of it. The newer ones seem to have a little bit more. Tears of Yorona has a ton. It's all about the barrel influence there. So it's just hard to compare. I personally, between those, would pick Tears because I just, I think it's a fantastically crafted product and love the taste, so. Okay. Um, okay, let's see here. Roy says, wow, Kokarin 8 sounds amazing. I'll have to store my 57.1 bottle for a special occasion. This would be a good special occasion pour. I mean, I wish it was a little bit easier to get your hands on. Um, it's, it's really enjoyable. You know, I was actually thinking in my head as I was tasting it if the Highland Park cask strength would be a comparable pour. It might be. You know, I mean, I really like the Highland Park cast strength. I might like it better than this personally. I'm tempted to do a side by side. I don't know. What do you guys think? I don't know about that. <laughs> um, I've not tried Deanston Virgin Oak. I cannot help you on that one. Sorry. Um, Tori Hanzo says, with the Kilcarin 16, I said mouthfeel too many times, <laughs> but damn that mouthfeel. Yeah, this is this is really good. I, I can see, I, I would, I, I believe that a 16 would be really, really impressive, so. Um, yeah, as Dylan said here, sometimes mouthfeel is why you buy. Uh, okay. Dylan says, uh, tell the CPU that you, <laughs> That you'll let me buy that six dollar bourbon from the pharmacy. Oh man, yeah, we saw some. I don't even remember what the brand was. It was some random bourbon brand at a drugstore. <laughs> Dylan really wants to wants to review it. So maybe we will. Hey, all right, let's. Hey, you know what? Let's see what happens. Let's go. Let's go get it. Let's go get it. Uh, so Dylan also would pick Tears of Urano because of the complexity. Yeah, I I agree. Hey, Dutch, why don't your friends want to drink with you? I don't know, man. I think I must stink or something. <laughs> uh, Roy Ann says, Dutch, can you explain why some other channels go to distilleries and choose barrels or whatnot? What is that all about? Um, I mean, people do barrel picks all the time. 
you know, there's a lot of brands that you can go there and you can pick a barrel. And if you work with a retailer that can sell it for you, you can do a barrel pick and sell it and make some money. And it's a lot of fun and it seems like it's a lot of fun. We haven't done it. We have, uh, I don't, we're not opposed to it if we do it and when we do it and actually got some information today about when and what we might be doing. And it might be a little sooner than I was thinking we'd do it. And it's with a brand that I think we would all really want to do it with. Um, so yeah, I mean, there's, there's whiskey groups that do it as well. Um, you know, if you want to sell it, you usually have to have a retailer that's going to partner with you in it uh, to handle with getting it distributed to them so that they can then sell it. And that's what we would do in, you know, if and when we do end up doing a pick, pick, we would sell it through this liquor store's website, probably give, you know, first dibs to Patreon and, and members, members on YouTube, and then just open it up. But um, yeah, it, a lot of fun. It's kind of just a fun thing to do. We just uh, haven't been in a rush to do it. There's a lot of brands out there that uh, they kind of just want you to promote their products too. And, you know, we are always kind of saying no to that because we want to buy everything we do. And in this case, we would be doing it partnered with a liquor store. So, you know, there would be a little bit of a buffer and, you know, it wouldn't be a brand approaching us to do it. This would be us going to them saying, hey, we'd like to pick a barrel and sell it through, you know, through this liquor store or whatnot. So, yeah, we're looking forward to doing that. We've always wanted to do it. It's just about timing and, and finding something that we really where we can go there and we can be pretty confident we're really going to find something we like. So that's kind of what it's all about. <laughs> Dylan. Jeez. Dylan says, go do a side by side. Okay. Yes, Dutch, do a side by side. Yes, does. Okay. Well, part of the problem with that is I don't know exactly where that bottle is. And I don't know which batch. I don't know that I have batch three here. I must have batch three here. Let me see. If it's over here, it should be easy enough to grab problem is can I pick out a Highland Park bottle visually very quickly? The answer seems to be no. Um, you guys really want just dead time on the on the YouTube stream for me to go find this bottle of Highland Park? I'll do it. I will do it for you guys. And I will keep rambling like this. All right, I don't see it here. I'm gonna to have to go into the other room and uh, search for it. So I will be right back. Hopefully my mic does not cut off and give you guys a bunch of static. All right, great success. Highland Park cask strength, batch number two. Anything happen while I was gone? All right, let's get this poured and uh, see how it is in comparison. So I should label my glasses. I'm not gonna mix them up or anything, so. Really, did I just do that? There we go. All right, let that sit for a second and uh, check in here. So, did you guys get your hands on 11 bricks? No, no, I, uh, I tried ordering it. I actually put an order in and then the place canceled my order. So, still kind of keeping an eye out for it. It's, it's so hard to get that it's almost like one of those where it's like, yeah, we could get it and review it, but who's even going to have a chance to, to find it at the end of the day? Uh, so this is batch two that I poured here. I, don't, I couldn't find the batch three. I don't know. I don't know where that one is. I thought I had brought it over here, but um, couldn't find it. So this is batch two. I've tried batch three. It's delicious. 
Um, all right. Let me get caught up here. Um, so here's Dylan's thoughts on the barrel picks. We are thinking about barrel picks, but I don't want to pick something just because we could. I want to pick something that I wouldn't mind owning the entire barrel. Yeah, exactly. No, I think we would agree. We want to do something interesting. <laughs> Jeez. Uh, would it help us make money? I don't know. Um, it it kind of depends on how much the liquor store is going to keep, which, you know, they're doing all the work, really. We would just kind of help them sell it. So I don't know. We We haven't really gone that deep into it, quite frankly, because for us, this is still... You know, hobby zone, we're not crazy about monetization and all that. Like, it's not the, the number one thing. We do monetize videos and we have membership and all that because it helps us offset our costs. But, um, you know, it's not the reason we're doing it ultimately. So, <laughs> 50 people joined working at F. There you go. And then dropped. Got it. Um, okay. I think you can find this, this decent whiskey to support. Yeah, I think we can. All right, I think caught up here. Yeah, I mean, there is a middleman ultimately because we can't sell it unless we get a liquor license or, uh, you know, have the ability to sell it directly, which we can't. Um, some, some brands sell direct to consumer now, but I think a lot of them have to use third party retailers anyway. So yeah, I mean, there's, there's going to have to be somebody else in that unless we can uh, steal a liquor license somehow. <laughs> okay. So Kilcarran 8, Highland Park, Cast Strength. Let me just see how the noses are. These, way, these may be very different. Hmm. They're not that different on the nose. I don't know. My nose is not, not working well here. Let's see. Yeah, a little more peat on the Kilcarran, I think. So let's try the Highland Park. Oh man, more heat. What's the proof? Yeah. Okay, so Highland Park is 63.9% alcohol. Kilcarran's what, 57, 57.5? So way more proof. Oh man. Are the flavors better? No. The Kilcairn's a better package. There's a bit more sherry on this Kilcairn. Maybe a bit more peat. And I think you're missing the age ultimately with Island Park. The depth isn't quite there. It's a lot cheaper. Well, is it cheaper? Yeah, it is a little cheaper. Easier to get your hands on for sure. Man, it's proofy, man. I forgot how proofy this is. Man, I really like it. <laughs> I mean, I really like both of these. And in some ways I find the Highland Park almost a more sanded down flavor profile. Like the sherry and the peat don't punch as much as they do in the Kilcarran. But, uh, oh, dang, the proof of the, I really like the proof of the Highland Park, too. Wow. Yeah. I mean, both really good. The Kilcarran's just got more depth. There's just more depth to it. The flavors are richer. So I'm going to let these both sit. And I will come back to them at the end and see if anything has changed on the palate. And we'll get into some bourbon. Close the night out here with some bourbon, some still Austin. And uh, check in with the chat real quick. Actually, I'm going to get it poured first. So let me show you guys the bottle here. Showed it at the beginning, but there you go. Still Austin Cast Strength Bourbon Whiskey. So this, um, this was a Spirits Direct at Total Wine believe it or not. So I use my coupon. <laughs> that might've been the reason I bought it. Uh, I know I've actually, I mean, I've heard a lot of people talk about it and praise it. And I've heard a lot of people praise many different 
Texas whiskeys, te Texas bourbons. And I've had some that I that I like. I haven't had any that I've loved. And maybe this is going to be that one. I don't know. Dylan, have you ever had this? Have you guys all tried this before? Am I like the last person to try this? Probably. Ooh. Another synthetic cork. Happy Friday, guys. All right, that was the best sounding pour of the night. I don't know if you guys could hear any of that, but it sounded really nice. Man, this cork is hard to get back in there. What the heck? <laughs> okay. Might just, just get really weak all of a sudden. No, that's just a really tight cork. Okay. All right, let that sit for a second and check in with the chat here, see how you guys are doing. Uh, okay, Ryan wants me to take a shot. Am I scared? I'm totally scared of taking a shot, man. Come on. I'm like turning 44 this year. I can't take shots anymore. Uh, Dylan says, we're moving on to Wild Turkey 12 year. Anyone on a second bottle? I am on my fourth bottle now, Dylan. Catch up. Uh, 818 says, uh, have you tried Lalo Tequila? I have. I was talking about it earlier, actually. Um, I recently had the, a, uh, the Blanco with the meal. I had a couple different, maybe two pours of it. And really enjoyed it. Really enjoyed it. Uh, I'm probably going to put it on the short list to be in our next Tequila Blind Battle series and see how it stands up to some of the other brands that are out there. But I, I really enjoyed it and think it's pretty solid. Siyama is on a seventh bottle. Wow. Um, Andrew says, some lady told me to smell my shirt when comparing colognes to reset my nose. Maybe try that. Yeah, that works, or like smelling your arm, or like yeah, your shirt, or something that kind of smells neutral. Um, I I do that sometimes. Yeah, my nose also just sucks. So, so Ryan says, uh, come to Ireland, a drink paint thinner, mad night. Probably, yeah. That sounds like a mad night. Uh, Roy Ann says, very helpful comparison. You saved me and will save my Cochran 8 cast strength. Well, thanks, Roy, for the super chat. Appreciate that. As you know, helps us out a lot. And thank you for your support of the channel. And glad that we could be of some use. So, all good. Uh, okay, Master Chief MJL says, I live in Connecticut and I can't find Fortaleza tequila anywhere. Send me one, I'll pay you. Yeah, it's unfortunate, you know, but I, I really, there's so many good brands out there. Try some El Tesoro, try some, try some Arete, try some Ocho, and you're going to be just as happy, if not happier. I mean, Ocho is, I think, across the board, you know, as good, if not better in some, certain categories. It's a little bit of a different experience, um, but, you know, try some of the stuff that's out there, easy to get. So there's no shortage of good stuff out there. Okay, of course, it's finally been near drooling, waiting to get into this one. All right. Were you, I think, Corey, you had the bottle of it. You were going to crack too, right? Is that, is that what you'd said? Um, all right, let's see here. Jeff says, still Austin, cast strength is hands down the best Texas bourbon I've had. Surprisingly tasty for the age and none of the Texas funk. Okay, interesting, because most of them are pretty funky. And, you know, I'm not a huge fan of that funk. It's not that bad. It's not like the worst thing I've ever had, but it's just not that great. So anyway, let's see. Still Austin cask strength. Let's see here. Hmm. I don't know if it's coming off the scotch getting into this, but uh, getting a little bit of something weird here. I'm not getting a lot of sweetness. Let me let me try to smell my shirt. That doesn't smell very good. <clears throat> I, I'm getting a weird paint thinner thing going on here. Somebody was talking about paint thinner earlier. Maybe that's why. Not not loving the nose. I don't smell whiskey. What the hell's going on here? Weird. 
All right, let me just give it a taste. That's good. Wow, there's like, I got no nose. I don't know what's going on with me, but I could not spell a damn thing. Just like, kind of an off-putting paint thinner type thing. Really don't like the nose at all, but man, the palette's good. All right, let me give another sip. Say something a little bit more descriptive than good. There's a good amount of sweetness. Slight touch of grain, but there's there's a well-developed sweetness there. Kind of a brown sugar, slightly thinned out. There's a little bit of barrel, a little bit of a little bit of grain, like I said. A little bit of spice. I mean, everything's pretty well balanced with it. Is it gonna is it gonna win any competitions? Would it knock out something around the same proof? I don't know. I feel like it's the finish is not particularly interesting. It's not very long. Again, I'm on my third bottle here, fourth bottle. So finish is one of the first things to go, I think, when you've had a bunch of stuff. But um, let me give it one more sip. Yeah, brown sugar's going on there. Yeah, the baking spices are coming through. They're, they're subtle. They're not super in your face. Very pleasant. There's a little bit of earthiness almost at the end. Um, maybe a little bit of nuttiness. What baking spices are here? It's almost like clove and cinnamon. They're subtle though, and they're kind of in there with the sugars, so it's, it's nice. It's very nice. This is an enjoyable sipper for sure, and not very expensive. Um, I want to say this bottle ended up being somewhere around 40 bucks. So, you know, pretty, pretty darn good. Let me uh, check in with you guys. See what's going on. Um, all right. Andrew says, I'm not crazy. Ocho is amazing. Yes, it is. <laughs> I was running admin. I don't know. Um, um Ernie. What's up, man? Just poured a glass of single barrel cast strength from a Virginia distillery bare knuckle bourbon whiskey. I have heard that name. I have not tried that whiskey, though. So interesting. Sean says, just got a bottle of Ocho Repo yesterday in Holy Smokes. Thank you for the recommendation. Yeah, it's a fantastic one. And if you're looking for repos, we'll, we'll say it again, man. But the Arete Repo, cheaper and uh, according to our blind, better. So, but Ocho is fantastic. Really, really good stuff. Uh, Will is moving on to some horse soldier barrel proof. Interesting. Uh, is that a single malt? This is a uh, bourbon. Cast strength bourbon whiskey from Texas. Um, yeah, Siama says it here. Good, not great. This is This is maybe slightly better than good. <laughs> I think of like all the things I've tried if I had a better nose, it would be really, really good. The nose is really almost off-putting, but the palate's pretty darn good. All the flavors are really nice. Pleasant, interesting. There's a lot to dig into here. Finishes a little bit lackluster, but um, you know, for the price point, it's an interesting one to try, so yeah. Yeah, I wouldn't chase it necessarily, Roy, but, you know, it seems to be pretty available. It's on a Total Wine um, Spirits Direct, so it seems to be pretty available at Total Wine. And you can get the coupons and get it for even cheaper. So worth trying, I would say, for sure. You may find that you really like it. could be a nice daily drinker for a lot of people. Do you get pine? I don't think I get pine. Power suggestion? Let me see. Hmm. I don't know that I would describe it as pine. Is there a slight medicinal tinge to it? Maybe. Maybe. Yeah. I, I, I see what you're talking about. I see that. Um, okay. 
Yeah, not in a bothersome way. Yeah, it's it's everything fits together really well with it. It's it's very nice. Um, all right, Hattori Hanzo asks a good question here. What bottle do you own that is considered a guilty pleasure? I have a three chord cast strength that I really enjoy. The shame. <laughs> guilty pleasure. I mean, I know my guilty pleasure. It's a uh, Angel's Envy Rye. <laughs> It's just, you know, when I'm in the mood for that, that's the only thing I want. And, you know, is it the most amazing thing? No, but it's uh, it's really tasty. It's like I have to have it every Christmas now. It's just become like that Christmas whiskey for me. And I don't eat a lot of sweet stuff, but sometimes having some kind of sweet whiskey is really nice. And that one's really sweet, super flavorful. And yeah, it's fantastic. Uh, Siyama says, I don't own it, but my guilty pleasure is Fireball. Wow. Yeah. Good is a compliment. Really? No. Um, double gold, triple gold, uh, quadruple gold. Yeah, I don't know about that. All right. Alan says, saw El Tesoro Repo today at Total Wine, $97.99. Is it worth it? No way, dude. That's way too expensive for El Tesoro Repo. It should be like 50 bucks. I don't know. I don't know why it's that much. That's kind of that seems kind of crazy to me. So very weird. Yeah. Um, considering that it was not nearly as good as the Arete Repo in our Repo Blind battle that we did, I would definitely opt for the Arete. And um, if you want a Repo, that's one to go with. You're not going to break the bank. And even if you don't love it, then you can mix it because it's not super expensive. So yeah, Hattori Hanzo, I did that last year. My aged eggnog, I used the Angel's Envy Rye. So it's really good. It works really well. Um, okay. Yeah, there you go, Leo. That's the price for the, yeah, the extra Añejo is like 99 bucks. So that's that, that pricing is way messed up, man. You should call them out on it. Uh, something I discovered is that a lot of these stores will price match. I was in a BevMo. And if you guys are in Southern California, you know what BevMo is or Northern California. And um, they price match. They will price match total wine. So all you have to do is show them it in stock at a local within the vicinity total wine, and they will price adjust it. So little that's, that's your uh, Friday helpful tidbit from Dutch. And if you don't live near a BevMo, try your other chain stores because they may price match. And I have a feeling, I don't know, I've never tried it at Total Wine. I kind of wonder if Total Wine would price match. So I'm going to have to try that next. All right, guys. Let's go back through everything I tried and, um, and see how everything is. So I started the night off with this bottle. Paradiso. Five-year-old extra Añejo from El Tesoro. Beautiful bottle there. Let me cleanse my palate a little bit. I've not been drinking my water. Okay, got a little bit of it left. Let's see. Let's revisit. <clears throat> mm. Yeah, the nose is really reminding me of the Arete Extra Añejo, which is a good thing because that, that was a delicious, delicious Extra Añejo. Mm. Let's try it out. Wow, the, fl the flavors have expanded across the board. That pepper is now really stretched out and blends in really well with the sweetness. The mouth feels, feels really good. Coming off all the bourbon and scotch, it's a little bit hard to pick out the subtleties in this, but man, super drinkable. Mm. That's really good. Um, I don't remember the price I paid for this. I want to say it's around 160, 150. So right in line with that Arete. Um, close to, I think the G4 extra is around the same price. Um, yeah, the El Tesoro regular extra Añejo is pretty cheap at 99. I mean, cheap, cheap for an extra Añejo, the five year, you know, obviously more, but. Um, I think worth it because compared to the $99 regular extra Añejo, I would pick this every single time. It's much, much better. I didn't, I don't really like the regular extra Añejo that much. This is, uh, is really good though. So 
That was a good choice, Siyama. Thank you for encouraging me to pick that one, or thanks for picking that one. Uh, okay, next up was the Kilcarran 8-year Cast Strength Sherry, and I compared it to an already open bottle of the Highland Park Cast Strength, batch number two, because I couldn't find the batch number three. I don't know what happened to it. It's in the void somewhere over there. Um, okay, so let's revisit the Kilcarran. Yeah, the nose is uh, maybe a little bit fruitier than it seemed at the beginning. Yes, yeah, it's, it's nice. It's great. Palette. Let me cleanse my palate. Coming off tequila, I got to remind myself. Okay, let's see. Oh, just a flavor explosion, man. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's punchy in all the right ways. It, it's, it doesn't favor one flavor over the others. They're all there. They're all easy to pick out. The only lacking thing I, I'd say is, I mean, the finish is still pretty good. Yeah, I mean, the, the, it definitely tapers. So, I mean, the finish... It does, the flavors are huge, and then they kind of just, they do go down, but they keep going for a while, even though they're, they're pretty diminished. I mean, that's fantastic. That's the only way I can describe it. I don't remember how much I paid. Let me look it up, actually. Give you guys some actual useful information here. Um, oh, wow, Dylan's posting like crazy in the... Um, Discord right now. I'm getting all of his messages. So he doesn't he doesn't he doesn't go on the Discord very often, by the way. I'll point that out. Um, okay, let's see what I paid for the Kill Karen. If I can find my receipt. Um, it was from the Whiskey Exchange. And I paid. Uh, oh wow. 96 pounds after shipping. So it was 46 pounds. 96 pounds after shipping. How much is that? Let's look it up. 96 pounds to US dollars. No, not pounds to kilograms. 122. Yeah, that's a bite. That's a good, that's a good pour. I mean, because I mean, the Highland Park cast strength is usually like around 90. So let's, uh, let's give that another sip here. Yeah, nose is very different now. You get, you get more of the peat on the Kilcarran coming through. The uh, the Highland Park. You almost get more of the like barley sweetness in the wood coming through. All right, palette on the Highland Park. <laughs> and the proof. I mean, it's about 10 proof points higher. So, so yeah, 63, 64% basically compared to 57%. I mean, it's, it's, signif it's a significant proof bump and you can really feel it. Um, it's really nice. Um, yeah, it's, the, the proof it is delicious, but the underlying flavors are, they're just not as intense as the Kilcarran. They're just not as intense. I mean, they're both really enjoyable for different reasons. I put it this way. The Highland Park, even though it's so proofy, it, it's almost more of a background whiskey in that the flavors don't, uh, they don't need to be studied as much. <laughs> and what, with the Kilcarran, you kind of, it, command, it commands your attention. Like, you're like, wow, this is taking me somewhere. I got to follow it. Um, both excellent. Um, if you can find the Kilcarran for around, I think what I ended up paying was 120 with shipping, um, from the UK. Um, if you can find it for around that price, I think it's totally worth it. I mean, it's, it's, it's worth, worth it in the low one hundreds, the Highland park. Like I said, I think it's usually around the 80 to $90 range. I also think it's worth it. You know, will you get a little bit of an elevated experience spending 20, 30 bucks more? Yeah, I think you will, but both really good cast strength, um, with some sherry influence. And um, the nice thing about the Highland Park is it's pretty available. So 
there, that does get bonus points there. All right. The final pour of the night was the uh, Still Austin bourbon from Texas. There's a lot of comments. Let me check in with the comments first. Leo, yep, that looks to be right in line, 110 to 120. Uh, Cheech is in the house. What's up, Cheech? Thanks for stopping in, dude. Uh, Leo, this is batch two. Doesn't actually say it on, oh yeah, it does. Release number two, yep. It says it on the back. 63.9%. I mean, these Highland Park stuff, man, some of the high-proof stuff is just so damn enjoyable. Uh, on the Rocks is in the house. It's up. Donner Pass Whiskey's showing up here late to the game. Um, have you guys done the extra any hope blind yet? No. We are probably actually going to film that next week. So we have not filmed it yet. And um, – I was talking a little bit about it at the beginning of the stream, and Dylan, if you're still here, you can pipe in with what you think. But the question is basically, do we just go with the four remaining brands that have an extra NEO? Because Fortaleza, Fortaleza does not make an extra NEO. So it would be uh, Arete, Gran Clasa, we'd have the El Tesoro, we'd have Ocho extra NEO, and we'd have G4 extra NEO. Do we keep it as a four-way, or do we throw another brand into it? Or do we just you know, keep it as the four, and then next time around, do another one. I don't know. So we've been debating that. We'll figure something out and either do it as a four-way or throw something else in there. Um, there was a good question earlier somebody asked about what is the favorite summer bourbon? <sighs> What's weird is during the summer, I tend to want to chill my stuff. So I tend to go for cast strength stuff that I can put a little bit of ice in and I won't lose too much flavor and I can chill it. So something that can stand up to a little bit of dilution. Um, I guess I could try whiskey stones. I've never really liked that though. I, I like a little bit of dilution sometimes with some of those punchy cast strength things. So I said it earlier too. Yeah, the old Forester barrel strength, a little piece of ice in it can be really enjoyable. Uh, summertime for me though is more tequila than, than a lot of other things. And highballs, <laughs> you know, having some scotch or some some bourbon with sparkling water and a little bit of lemon over ice, that's really nice during the summer. You can do the same thing with tequila, make a, a ranch water, tequila, squeeze a lime, some soda water, some Topo Chico, whatever you got, and so enjoyable. So those are probably my go-tos. <laughs> it's a completely useless response from me, sorry. All right. So, end of the end of the stream here. We could maybe do one more. What do you guys think? Um, you should use this version of El Tesoro. I think this version is better. So this is an interesting question. I still got to take my last sip of Still Austin here. I agree. This is much better. But my question is, for the process would it be more interesting to include a very inexpensive one? And that's why I'm tempted to leave the regular El Tesoro in there because that's a $99 extra Añejo. How would that stand up to these other brands, which are, I think all of them more expensive. So I agree this is much better and it's in the same price range, but I'd kind of like to have a cheap one in there. You know, we've had the cheaper Arete and a lot of the, and all the other blinds, the Grand Classe extra Añejo is, is the same price as a lot of these. So. I don't know. I could be swayed. Make your argument. <laughs> All right. The last pour I did was the Still Austin. Um, I'm going to throw a couple things up here, and you guys can vote for what the final pour will be, okay? Um, as I kind of take my last sip here. i got to grab a couple bottles here. And you guys can pick between... I'll put it in a poll, so don't pick yet. The uh, one I really want to try, which is the Campbelltown Lock which is a, um, a product from Springbank distilleries, well, from the Campbelltown distilleries, but it's a blend. So it's their own blend of, um, of Springbank that they put out. And I've never tried it before, and it's really interesting. So I want to try that for sure. Uh, but I've also got a couple of the bottles here. So this is the Emerald Giant Rye Cask Strength. Is this unopened? Yeah, this is Dylan's bottle. And another one of Dylan's bottles, which is a Doc Swinson 
Uh, bourbon finished in uh, straight cognac. Le Spree, it says on it. So let me make a little poll here, and you guys can vote for the final pour of the night. And let's see here. Add poll. And we're going to go, what should I pour? And we're going to go with uh, Campbell and Loch. Did I spell that wrong? Nope. I don't think I did. Um, Doc Swinson. What is this finish? Uh, I just said it. I can't remember. Cognac. And then the last one is Emerald Giant. Cast strength. Right? Yep. Okay. So there's the poll. <clears throat> Lose my voice. You guys can vote, and I will crack into whichever one you guys pick. Hey, man. Prescription bourbon in the house. What's up, dude? Good to see you here. Thanks for hanging out. Donner Pass Whiskey says, just finished Yamazaki 12 and poured Nika from the barrel. Feeling Japanese. I really think so. <laughs> well, hey, Nika from the barrel has actually got scotch in it, so. Um, but it is a Japanese brand, man. I, I was just dis discussing the Yamazaki 12 price stuff. Uh, we, we recorded a podcast the other night and we talked a bit about that. It's, it's really kind of crazy. It's just, uh, it's unfortunate because I, I enjoy that whiskey, but man, at the prices that it's being sold for today, I just cannot get on board with it. Um, Eddie's edits. Cheers. I'm having the RN10. Have you all tried it? And Dylan replied with what I was going to say, which was, RN is great. Dutch and I recently sipped a private barrel. Yeah. And it was very interesting. Very interesting. Um, okay. Poll time. Yeah. Yeah. Ranch water in the sun is perfecto. That's like my favorite thing, man. If I have a few hours, uh, if I have a few minutes in the afternoon, a few minutes, half an hour, whatever it takes make a ranch water sit outside for a little while just man that's perfect <clears throat> leo i am a hakushu fan boy i really like yama but i would pick the hack every time so Corey says this still austin has 118 proof flavor without 118 proof burn yeah it's, it goes down really really easy this is my final pour there of that um camel pen, uh, Still Austin. Let's see if I can get all three of these in the shot. There we go. That's a little better, huh? Um, so, yeah, I'm finishing off my uh, Still Austin pour here. Let me give it one more sip. It's good. I mean, there's no other way to put it. It's, it's not, blowing me, uh, not blowing me away necessarily. It's impressive that if it is really only a two year that it's that good, because that's pretty good. Um, <laughs> sorry. Just, I feel like I just said that, like, uh, I think you should leave or something. But uh, anyway, um, <laughs> but uh, it's not blowing me away, but I am enjoying it. So, uh, all right, let's see. I'm going to catch up on the chat here and then see how the poll is going. Right now, it looks like Campbelltown Lock is in the lead. Which I am happy about because that's what I want. That's what I want to taste. <laughs> uh, okay, <clears throat> let's see where was I? Yeah, Dylan said it right there. He's more of a Yamazaki guy. Um, what's this? Ah, oh, cool. Trini and C in thirty minutes. Are they doing a live stream or something? Do they live stream? I don't. I don't know. Their stuff is so much fun to watch, by the way. They're 30 second things. I, I love that stuff. Um, okay, man, I got lost here. Everything reset on me and I don't know where I was. Uh, sometimes stream StreamYard just kind of like puts you all the way to the bottom of the, the chat. So I'm trying to catch up and see where I was. Sorry, guys. Notorious says, try the Redwood. Um, <laughs> Dylan is trying to re get reinstated from his suspension. Um, nice Redwood Empire. Uh, so Donner, pa Donner Pass Whiskey said had three different bottlings. Have, wow. I'm going to try to read English here, guys. Had three different bottling dates of the Campbelltown Lock, one light and two dark. Some nice, some mice 
batch variation. Mice. <laughs> Chris says, tried still Austin casting for the first time. Also, I agree with you on the nose. Palette was pretty dang good. Love CP. I love the CP too. Um, yeah, that's kind of how I would sum it up. I mean, the nose I actually kind of didn't like. It's gotten a little bit better, but it was very like uh, chemical smelling initially. Palette's fine. It's really pretty pleasant. Um, so yeah, all right. You know, it's not crazy. It's not priced crazy, and I can really appreciate that that it's not priced at like a hundred bucks because it's better than a lot of the craft stuff that's priced at like 70, 80 bucks. So I can appreciate that for sure. Um, Carolyn says, uh, love the ranch water too. Great job on Curiosity Channel. Love the Haze 5. Thank you very much. Appreciate that. Uh, Donner Pass is also Hakushu. 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 I can never say it right. Um, Ernie says, Yamazaki 12 is going for 180 here. It was 110 last year. Yeah. I saw it at Costco for 180. A lot of other places, it's it's even higher now. Uh, the grocery store has it for 200 bucks now. The grocery store that usually doesn't really mark up very much, and it's it's sitting there. I don't think it's going to move at that price. I really don't, and it shouldn't because it's not worth it. But man, what a what a pain. Graham Chaser in the house says, "Hey Dutch, always a pleasure watching Curiosity Public live videos. Thank you very much. Appreciate that. I'm not sure." that's really true though because it's kind of ch chaotic here <laughs> um <clears throat> kagan c says sup dutch bummed i've missed most of the stream tried some don falamo imperial last week truly exceptional pour perhaps my favorite extra anyhow now awesome is that the one that comes in the ceramic bottle i have not tried that um i've tried um i think the blanco and the anyhow from don falano really good stuff i think it it's it, is that 1146? I think it is 1146, right? Um, so I would expect the extra in to be fantastic. I mean, pretty much everything that comes out of 1146 is really, really good. So, all right. So Leo agrees, Hawk over Yama. Um, and let's see here. Dylan says, Anecdote about patience and vigilance, since we're talking about Hokushu. Haven't seen any 18 year for retail for years and happened to walk into a large chain grocery store and I got one. Crazy. That is crazy, dude. I have missed out on that bottle every single time I've tried to get it. Every single time. Oh, Marco wants the Doc Swenson to go. Um, uh, doesn't look like that's going to happen. Campbelltown's still in the lead. I'm going to give it a maybe, see, maybe another 30 seconds. We'll see if anything changes. Um, Doc Swenson, man, they're getting a lot of hype with their uh, finishes here. I, I tried some of the other ones and they didn't speak to me, but maybe this is a good one. I don't know. Um, okay. <laughs> Doing extreme coupons at Total Wine. He's, you know what? I know that to be true, actually. <laughs> he does leave with all the wine bags. <laughs> oh, man. <clears throat> uh, okay, let's see. Where are we here? Um, Corey says, can't get Hakushu or Yamazaki here in Alberta. Annoying. It is annoying, and it's basically, you know, impossible now, too, to get them here for a reasonable price. Um, but, you know, the prices are going to have to normalize eventually. I don't think it's going to move at 200 bucks. And I just think back to, I think, what, like two years ago, I bought it in a grocery store for 70 bucks, a bottle of Yamazaki 12. And for it to go from 70 to 200 in the span of two years is just kind of mind boggling. You know, when it hit 120, I was like, okay, that's the cap. It's not going to go any higher because they can't move it. And it's gone higher, so kind of crazy. All right, let's end this poll. Campbelltown Lock is the clear winner, 41%. Second place was Emerald Giant. Third place was Doc Swinson. Thank you to the 41 of you that voted on that. Appreciate your input because I can't make any decisions for myself. Just kidding. I can, but I wanted to let you guys make the one. Okay, Campbelltown Lock. I mentioned a little bit about it. <clears throat> it is a blend, blended whiskey, which 
I think for some reason here at Curiosity Public, we're a little bit obsessed with blended whiskeys because they can be really good and they can be really interesting and they show a lot of craftsmanship these, these days. You know, blended whiskey got such a bad rap back in the 80s, 90s and 2000s because it tended to be cheaper stuff that was blended for the masses and it was crap. There's a lot of good blended stuff going on today. Um, you know, just look at Doors 32, right? Still our highest rated spirit, blended scotch, but it's amazing. Uh, is this going to be amazing? I don't know. It is It is Springbank Distillery's blend of malt and it is... Uh, you know, 100% Cameltown whiskeys blended and bottled by Springbank. And, you know, 46%. I appreciate that. I don't have a glass, so let me get a glass. I am ill-prepared as usual. And let's see how this bottle that I've been very uh, intrigued by. Price point. I'm trying to remember how much I paid for this. Let me, let me, uh, let me pour it, and then I'll look up the... Uh, I think I got it at Total Wine. So whatever Total Wine's list price is what I paid, um, I want to say it was 70-ish. I, I really can't remember. Very light in color. Somebody was talking about batch. This says, uh, let's get it in front of the light here again. Uh, 2022, so this is the July 2022 batch. If that means anything to anybody. Um, okay, so let's see how much this one is. It's like, yeah, 80 bucks. Is that right? Something like that? Yeah. Total Wine has it. Nope, no results. <laughs> yeah, but it looks like, uh, it looks like around 80 bucks. 70 to 80 bucks. Uh, I see it as low as 66, so. Not crazy. Wow, the aroma coming off, it's really pleasant. Let me give it a quick sniff and I'm gonna check in with you guys and then come back and taste it. Mmm, mmm, that's pleasant. Fruity. Okay, catching up here. What do you guys, you guys are talking about prices of stuff. Uh, I think you're still talking about Kushu and all that. Dutch needs to hurry up and drink all three and give us fresh crack reviews. Uh, Roy says, I think Glen Morangy is the closest thing to great Japanese whiskey. Yeah. I mean, I think the non-peated stuff definitely kind of goes in that direction. It's hard. It's, it's always hard to compare for me. So Cohen's in the house says, I was at KL today and they had a case stacking of Kushu 12. What was the price? Did they have it priced crazy? I'm guessing 180, 190. Uh, uh, Rostislav says Kushu 18 is eight, uh, 700 in Japan and Yama 18 is 1100. My friend just came back this week. Wow. Crazy. Justin says, yeah, I was just about to mention Doers 32. You got me with that recommendation after being a single malt snob. It gets a lot of people, you know, I think, I think there's still a lot of people that can't bring themselves to buy <laughs> blended scotch, uh, despite one with a 32 year age statement. Uh, you know, it's, I did a fresh crack recently of that, uh, 30 year old, um, what's it called? The, uh, the one we just released a short of, and my brain is not working. So I got to look it up and it is the what is it called dang it seven star or something it's not seven star uh cadenhead seven star it is seven star okay so yeah, there you go i was trying to convince myself it wasn't what i thought what it actually was yeah so anyway point being is that there's some age stated really amazing blended scotch this one is not age stated but it smells very good and we'll i'll get into it in a version in a version. In a second, I was reading this comment, which said there's a Campbelltown Lock sherried version also. Can okay, all had cases of it stacked there today. Dylan says, did you see those prices on Kale for the 100th anniversary, 18 years? Yeah, I did see those. I saw them disappear instantly. Man, um, 
the store I was at today, a local store here in San Diego, the guy said he was going to be getting, I think, one bottle each or maybe two bottles each of the 18 years. You know, they're going to get marked up because they can and because some people, somebody's going to buy them. It's just nutty. Uh, Donner Pass Whiskey says, with Springbank 10 and Kilcarran uh, 12 at 100 bucks, this is a good value if you get it for 60 to 70. Um, interesting. I'll have to give it a try. Let me try that. Oh, Silent Screams. I literally just bought that bottle today. So we will uh, maybe get a fresh crack of it soon, maybe a review of it. Um, I don't know. You know, it's a it's a very interesting sounding bottle because I think it's aged like what, like five years, but they couldn't call it an Añejo because of the kind of barrel that it was aged in, which is fascinating. Um, it's pricey. It's usually around like 180 to 220. So it's around the $200 range. But yeah, I just picked it up because I've been wanting to try it. Um, I've tried a lot of that line. Um, I've tried the Sass Sassanac one, which is fantastic. Um, but I have not tried the Repo Rare. So, all right. The leg's not super impressive. And not bad. Nose on the Campbelltown Lock. Very enjoyable, pleasant. I gotta throw that comment up because it's great. Fruity, no, no sherry, and I mean, it's not a lot in the blend. Not really a lot of peat or anything like that coming through. Kind of mellow, fruity. No, maybe not mellow. Just fruity and and good, pleasant. All pleasant aromas. All right, let's check the palette. Cheers, guys, to a very fun Friday night. Thank you guys for hanging out. Final pour of the night. Let's see how this one is. Oh, man. Easy sipper. Super flavorful. Very fruity. It's got some depth to it, too. The fruit just carries on. Okay, what am I getting? Getting uh, apricot and apple and grape. Kind of lighter fruits. Oh, that's it's really nice. This is a summer scotch <laughs> right here. Oh man, pretty good depth to the flavors. Even though everything's on the lighter range, they're kind of delicate. Mm. That's just juicy on the palate. Uh, really interesting, man. I dig that. I dig that. Co uh, Cohen says 160-ish for the Kajou 12 at KL. That's not bad <laughs> compared to like the $200 everywhere else. I still wouldn't still wouldn't pay it for it, but you know, better than some of the other places. Uh, <clears throat> Trendy Brendy says, speaking of Kajou 12, picked up a picked up one at Total Wine yesterday for 120. I mean, at this point, if you see it for 120 and you like it or you've never tried it. That, that might be your last chance to get it at that price, so you might want to swoop. I'm halfway tempted to get another bottle if I see it at around 120 bucks because, you know, I have a couple in reserve maybe, but I really like it. I had a pour of it last night and just kind of was sitting there lamenting, man, how is this 200 bucks? <laughs> but, uh, yeah. Whiskey A says... We have Campbelltown Lock 21 sitting on a shelf around me. Haven't brought myself to buy some. Probably should. Curious what the price is. Let us know. Um, I Man, I really enjoy the heck out of this. Um, Ray might be coming to a Curiosity Public soon. Just, uh, just, just teasing. Just teasing here that this comment down below might be coming... I can't phrase this right, but you get the point. <laughs> Cohen says it's $75 malt at best, does not drink better than 75 at most. I mean, still the best price I ever paid for Yama. Yamazaki was uh, 70 bucks. I mean, I don't think I ever got a Hakushu for that much. Yeah, I don't, you know, I, I wouldn't say I like spending $120 on it. I just enjoy sipping on it. So Dylan, should we, okay, so there we go. Dylan just said, yeah, we have the 36 and it is going to come to Curiosity Public very soon. Um, we haven't cracked into it yet. 
And I think we're going to film a proper video of the unboxing and the tasting of it. I have no idea what to expect, man. It was expensive and it looks beautiful. I mean, the bottle looks so awesome. I was so tempted just to crack into it when I got it, but I figured it'd be fun to do it as a group. And um, it will probably be part of a upcoming doers drink through as well. So stay tuned. There you go. At the beginning of the stream, I wasn't going to tell you guys what the upcoming drink through was going to be, but I think we're going to try to film that one next week. So we'll have to see. Um, Corey says, I've only found the doers 21 happy with it, but sh would sure like to find the 32. Yeah. It seems like it's kind of a regular release thing. Um, I've, you know, around here, it seems to disappear and then come back in stock and then disappear and then come back in stock kind of on like every four to six month cycle. Um, I bought a bunch last time it was around because I just didn't know if it's going to keep coming or not. Uh, it's just, I just enjoy the heck out of it. Um, Roy says, I liked the Nika Pure Malt better, actually, which is about 80 bucks and available. So are you talking about in comparison to Hakushu and Yamazaki or in comparison to Campbelltown? Curious what you were talking about. Because I do like the Pure Malt a lot. I really like this. This is such an easy sipper. Oh, man. Oh, enjoying this a lot. Um, so which release is that? Which are you talking about? Are you talking to me? Uh, 2022 release, if you're talking about this. Um, Jason says that the Hakushu, Hakushu 12, I can hear Dylan laughing at me for mispronouncing it, by the way. It is up to 160 here. Stan T says, I bought a few Doors 32 at 140 before they went up, before they went up to uh, 230 at total one. The 27 is still at 93. Would you recommend snagging one? Thanks for all the work you all do. Favorite reviewers, hands down. Stan, I have not tried the 27. Dylan has. Dylan, you're still in chat. Respond to this comment and um, let Stan know. I believe Dylan said that the 21 and 27 are fine, but they're not nearly as good as the 32. They're good. They're not nearly as good though. So yeah, I mean, it's jumped up. It's so weird. There's a couple of total wines that have opened up here in San Diego recently, actually three of them in the vicinity. And one of them had Doors 32 sitting on the shelf for 160. The other one had it sitting on the shelf for 220 or something like that. So even just driving 15 minutes, you know, I was able to get a couple bottles at a lower price. So, yep, there you go. Um, you guys are talking about Amrit. Uh, Donner Pass says, glad you are enjoying, glad you're liking it. it. Disappeared fast, so it's easy to have. An yeah, this is so, as the kids say, crushable. Is that, isn't that the word they use? Dylan would know. Hmm. Such an easy drinker, such an enjoyable flavor profile. Man. Um, the Lock 21 is one, uh, 130 Canadian. <clears throat> 130 Canadian, so that's what, like a uh, little under 100 bucks US? Is that right? Let's see, 130 CAD to USD. 100 bucks. That's, I mean, if this one's in the 60 to 70 range for us, I'd pay 30 bucks more for an aged data 21. That sounds awesome. I'll have, to, I'll have to take a look for that, actually. So I did not know that they had Camel Town Lock 21. Let's see, is it? Oh, wow. So it seems like they don't sell it in the US. Um, but it looks like you can, might be able to track a bottle down. Very interesting. So yeah, it looks like around 200 to get it here, probably because I have to re-import it, or not re-import it, uh, import it. I'll have to look for that next time I'm traveling. That's one that's gonna be on my list because I, I mean, I like things like this that are not overly complex, not overly, like not punching you in the face that are just so drinkable and so enjoyable. The kind of thing that I can sip on it, enjoy the heck out of it. And if I wanna take the time and really dig into it and study it for a little while, there's a lot there to unpack, but man, my kind of whiskey, man. I, I, I dig that. 
Okay, I am gonna finish up with the comments here. Cause Steve says, got an El Tesoro finished in Lafroig barrel. Never had one. This bottle right here. Um, I think Jules and I have filmed a fresh crack of this. It just hasn't gotten uploaded yet. <laughs> it's all, it's, it tastes like scotch. It tastes like, it tastes like exactly what it says. A tequila finished in Lafroig, and it's really interesting. I don't know if I love it or I hate it. It's, it's just interesting. It's a very interesting gram. Um, <laughs> this is comment of the night. Tours 32, the five minute abs of whiskey. Oh man. Oh, I mean, Tours 36. Okay. So Dylan says I can't open it until he gets here. All right, fine. Cohen says, Kale had the Yoichi 10 for 170 pass. Oh, okay. So Roy's clarifying that you like the Nika pure malt better than the Yama and Hakushu 12. Yeah. Uh, it's, it's nice because it's cheaper and it's more available. Do I like it better than either of those? I don't know. I'd still probably grab the Hakushu 12 personally. I, I dig that one. Uh, so Dylan says, I tried the set, the 27, Doors 27. It was not as great. My family still killed it in an hour. So still good, but not as good, right? <laughs> I'm not going to read this one either, but it's a funny comment. Uh, Tori so, Hondo says, I got Doors 21 rung out for 40 bucks. I ran out of there. It was delicious. Yeah, I, I, yeah, I haven't tried either one. I'm going to, I got to pick them up. Because if we do the drink through of doers, obviously we got to have them. So it'll be fun to try those in the drink through. Northwest bourbon just showing up now. Cheers, everyone. U.S. Did you put a, a, a graphic or something? Because it just says U.S. U.S. Oh no, it's the it's the glass. Yeah, sorry. Streamyard does weird things with the uh, the graphics. Um. <laughs> Dylan can smoke his $60 Cohibas and still pretend they are good and worth it. Hey, they're still good. Whether they're worth it or not, I don't know about that. But I haven't bought a Cohiba in a long time. Um, <clears throat> let's see here. You guys are, man, you guys are just peppering the comments here. I can't, I can't get my bearings. Um, okay. Cohen says, I sold off all my Habanos recently and tripled my money on them. Not worth smoking because of what they can be sold for now. Yeah. I mean, like if your goal is to turn a profit on them, I completely agree. I've got some boxes that would sell for a lot of money right now, but you know, I can't argue with that. <laughs> I, I can't see Dylan selling his Cohibas though. That's, <laughs> that, day, that day will never come. You guys, it's still have a lot of fun to smoke them. Uh, but I've been dabbling much more in non-Cubans than I ever have before. And I'm, I'm finally finding a couple here and there that I'm enjoying enough to say, okay, I can smoke these for a while until the Habano craziness dies down. And in the meantime, let all my Habanos just sit and age and get amazing. And then when the prices come down, hopefully be able to restock. Um, but yeah, Hattori, thank you for that comment. We comment because we <laughs> miss the live streams, Andrew Musk. <laughs> um, all right, guys, this has been super fun. Uh, we've been going for exactly two hours, and I am going to crash because I'm tired and out of it. I feel like Dylan and I are still jet lagged from our travels, uh, even though we've been back for like a week now. Um, yeah, it, uh, we've got a podcast coming out talking about our trip, and we've got a couple videos from it. There was a short of Dylan drinking a highball. We drink a lot of highballs when we we're in Korea. And um, we didn't film that much. We should have filmed a lot more, dude. But uh, we didn't. Uh, we did film a couple of fresh cracks that you should be seeing soon. Uh, hopefully, I can get those edited early next week. Uh, as far as videos coming up, what do we got? Um, there's kind of a podcasty conversation type video coming out. Let's just see, kind of see how those do. Um, we haven't really done anything like that before. And um, that's going to be probably the next video. Uh, we've got a what's in the box video, which our uh, um, Discord crew has seen. It, I'll probably just drop that one as well. Uh, Dylan had a bunch of boxes of booze that he just was bringing to the set. So he and I opened them and went through everything in them and 
Uh, in the first one, we didn't actually open any of the bottles. We just kind of went through everything that was in the box. We did film a couple more that uh, will get edited as well. And those, we did open them up and um, open it up a couple of them. Uh, other reviews and other videos coming out. We have a drink through of a brand that nobody's going to care about that for some reason I forgot about. And that one will get edited and released probably in the next week or two. It was Bespoken Spirits, which is a brand that's trying to basically accelerate the aging process doing their proprietary method. Uh, anything else interesting? I don't, I don't know what else we got coming out. Um, like I said, there was some content that Dylan and I filmed in Korea and um, nothing very long. And then we're going to be filming a bunch of stuff next weekend. So uh, look forward to some exciting new content. We're going to be doing some more of the Contender Series. we got some drink throughs, as I mentioned, the Doers drink through probably. Maybe another drink through, maybe another tequila drink through. And some reviews and, you know, all kinds of fun stuff. So thank you guys so much for tuning in tonight. Hope you have an awesome weekend. And cheers to you all. Stay curious.